Hey Zeke, how are you doing this week? I'm good, how are you? I am good. Guess what day we're celebrating this Sunday? It's not Memorial Day, that was last week. I'll give you a hint. I'm wearing red and we have a fire. Did you give up? Pentecost. It's Pentecost, that's right. Pentecost is a very special day in the church calendar, and I brought a gift for you. I had some of these left over from last year, and I was going to give them out to the kids this year for Pentecost uh, during our children's moment. So we're going to have a little children's moment here, and let's open these together. So what's the first thing that you're going to pull out? Party hat. Not just any party hat. What's it say on it? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's a happy birthday party hat because today, Pentecost, we celebrate the church's birthday. So that's our first thing. Okay, that's okay about. All right, what's the next thing in your bag? A kazoo thing. Kazoo. So the Bible says that on the very first Pentecost, all of the disciples were praying in the upper room and they were just kind of meeting together, just then. But Pentecost was already a Jewish holiday. And so um, there were lots of strangers, lots of people who had come in from strange cities into the town of Jerusalem. And when the Holy Spirit came down and um, came down to stay with us forever, one of the, the things that happened was there was a loud noise. So let's blow our little kazoos and make a loud noise. <laughs> you did great, see? Okay, what's next in your bag? Um, candle. Candle. When the Holy Spirit came down to the disciples, it said, the Bible says it came down like tongues of fire. That's why we have our campfire out here today. And we have our candles to remind us that um, the Holy Spirit came down like fire. What else is in your bag there? A shiny golden thing. Oh, another noisemaker. And this one is super special because it has little things that blow in the wind. Because the Holy Spirit, when it came, it didn't just make a loud noise. It didn't just come down as tongues of fire, but it also came like a wind. So uh, loud noise and a wind. So let's blow them. And ironically, you also blow them on birthday parties. So that All right, and let's read our scripture and let's see if we can find all of those things we just talked about in our scripture today. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were mean together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of, or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And every one present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, Fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about it. These people are not drunk, as some of you assume. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In these days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
So Zeke, we talked a little bit about Pentecost and what happened on Pentecost. And you know, every year we talk about Pentecost, but this year is a lot different than what normal years are. And so I'm gonna talk about something different about Pentecost. So what's interesting is Pentecost happens right at the beginning of the books, book of Acts. And you know, the book of Acts was a scroll originally, right? Do you know who wrote the book of Acts? It was Luke. Guess what other book Luke wrote? Luke. He did. So there were the, his writings were so long that they couldn't all fit into one book. So they took the first half of his writings and they made the book of Luke. And then they took the second half and they made the book of Acts. So read Luke first. So you read Luke first. And what's interesting is in the book of Luke, Luke is taking Jesus closer and closer and closer to the temple. And then Pentecost happens in the very beginning of Acts. After Jesus has risen from the dead, he spent time with his disciples, he has ascended to heaven, and now all, and all of a sudden, the disciples are in Jerusalem, right by the temple. And guess where the rest of the book happens? In the temple. No, not in the temple. They go out into the world, out beyond the temple. And what scholars believe was happening was that Luke wrote the book of Acts um, after the temple had been destroyed. And all the people who had worshiped God in the temple their whole lives were heartbroken. They were sad because they couldn't meet God in God's house anymore. And they were really upset and they said, how can we continue to be Christians if we can't meet in God's house? How can we continue to be Jewish if we can't be in the temple? And Lots of scholars think that Luke probably wrote Acts for those people to say, you know what, when the Holy Spirit came, you became the temple. God's people became the temple because God no longer just lived in a house or in a church or in a temple. He, be, he started to live inside you. And now I bet you can guess where I'm going with this, right? Yes. On Sunday morning, where are we going to worship? We're well, not at church. Not at church. We can't go to the house that we know God's always in. God's house. We can't see him at the church, even though we have always seen that as a holy place to find God. Does that mean that we can no longer worship God? No. Why is that? Because where is God's real temple? In your heart. That's right. It's in our hearts. That when the Holy Spirit came, God made our hearts his temple, not some building. So that wherever we are, if we're in the backyard by the campfire, if we're on the front porch doing a sermon, if we are here in Lawrenceburg or if we're in Jerusalem, God is with us because a building is no longer a holy place. Wherever we are is the holy place. And you know, a lot of us are really sad right now because we really, really, really want to go back to church, to be back in the church building. But you know what? Even if we're sad that we can't go into that place that we've always known, like those first Jews and Christians, God is still with us and wherever we are is a holy place because God is there. So that's what I want you to remember this week and I hope everybody else remembers this week too. Let's end with a prayer together. Can, you, okay. can we do that? Yeah. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all